Hello, and welcome to our very first Georgia Rep Health Society podcast. We're really excited that you joined with us here today. We hope that we do a great job. We're only going to get better from here. So please, if you have any suggestions of what we can do better or suggestions of what you would like us to discuss, please do let us know. We'll be excited to take a look. So first and foremost, I am Kayla Sosi. I am the marketing director of Georgia Reptile Society. I'm Katie Brewster. I'm the membership director of Georgia Reptile Society. We're super excited to be doing this. We want to get more involved with all of you. Yes, definitely. And kind of show you a little bit more about what Georgia Reptile Society is about, what we do for the community, what we do for our fellow members and volunteers, perks and benefits of being members and volunteers. And we're also going to talk to you today about the Lacey Act ban that uh, is coming to an end for the, what was it, like a grandfathered year that they gave us. So we'll be talking a little bit more about that, um, the new laws that are passing and becoming official official as of December 4th of this year. So let's get started by telling you a little bit more about Georgia Reptile Society. So we are a nonprofit 501c3 organization. We do a lot of stuff. So first and foremost, we love our outreach. That is where we go to events. We set up tables to show off our animals that we have, lizards, snakes, turtles, uh, bugs. <laughs> Lots of bugs. So uh, we have a lot of different really cool animals that we like to introduce to uh, the guests that come to our events with us. Uh, you have an opportunity to pet and hold any of them. And we like to change people's minds. That's one of our favorite things is someone will come to us with a fear or hesitation of reptiles. And by the time they leave our booth, they have a newfound respect and dare we say love. Yeah, I mean, we were talking about this earlier. We know that people are naturally afraid of reptiles. Right. They can be naturally afraid of them. And ultimately, you know, we never force anything on anybody. If somebody is scared, we don't try to put a snake in their face. Our ultimate goal is to create that empathy and that respect, to know that if you see a snake in your yard, they're not out to get you. Even for the inverts, the the tarantulas that we work with, the tailless whip scorpions, mm -hmm. all of those things, even the roaches, everything has a place. And we we're trying so hard to change minds about the unloved creatures of the world. Yes, because when it all comes down to it, they're all just animals. They all feel fear, hunger. They feel everything that mm -hmm. we can. Um, maybe not love as deeply, but they definitely do feel fear. And when you come across them in your yard, they don't understand like properties or boundaries or no. anything like that. They are just searching for food and shelter. So if you are a little bit more hesitant to be around uh, snakes or lizards or anything like that, and you find one in your yard, uh, the best thing for you to do is just go back inside for like 15 minutes. And when you go back out, they're likely going to be gone because sure. they don't want to be messed with. They don't. They want to be left alone. Yes. Same. <laughs> so, uh, so that's the outreach portion. Uh, we also very much enjoy going to schools and museums. And that's a little bit of outreach as well. We kind of change minds there. And uh, it's always fun to show children our animals. They always have the most fun. Children are my favorite oh, because... Gosh. When you catch them that young and you inspire that love and that respect. Yes. You have the many young Steve ones. Irwins running around. Exactly. <laughs> We're just raising more Steve Irwins of the world. It's so important because a lot of the time children come up and they haven't been taught this fear. Now, fear can be inherent and that's a whole discussion on its own. A whole podcast could be done about that. But yeah. so many children, they just, they're not scared and they'll just reach out and touch and they, they don't have this reaction of, oh, they're like, oh, wow. So... Love to see that. Yes. It's always wonderful. We do. So outreach, education. We also have a adoptions program where, you know, if you feel like you've bitten off more than you can chew and you need to surrender your reptile, reach out to us. Uh, we are always looking for more foster homes as well so that we have room to accept these mm -hmm. surrenders. Then we take them to the vet. 
get them checked out, make sure they're healthy. If they're not, we rehabilitate them. And when they are healthy, we look for their forever home. And you can also adopt through us uh, for significantly cheaper prices than other places. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, the phrase adopt, don't shop, it applies not only to furry animals, but to reptiles as well. For sure. So uh, how about you talk a little bit more about what it's like to be a member sure. or a volunteer of Georgia Reptile Society? Yeah, for sure. So being a member is great. We truly are building a community in Georgia because we're from all over. Georgia Reptile Society, we don't have a brick and mortar place. We, our board lives all over Georgia. <laughs> yes. We're actually, what, two hours from our president right now. So we're all over the place and those times that we get to come together, whether it's an event, whether it's for a wedding. We had a wedding yesterday in the GRS. It was oh. beautiful. Congratulations, Orion and Dan. So building that community is so important, right? Because as reptile lovers, a lot of the time we are misunderstood or we feel that way. Sometimes mm -hmm. we can feel excluded or on the fringe of society, but when you find your people, it's a special time. And so we are getting, the best people. We what? are. I mean, <laughs> so much fun. <laughs> so humble, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> so <laughs> it's, it's really great. So being a member is just $20 for the year. Mm -hmm. you, you get in free to any of the events that we go to. So we go, oh, we've been yeah. going to, if, yeah, if you volunteer, Thank yeah, you. You're welcome. Little little caveat there. You know, you can be a member <laughs> and you don't have to volunteer. It's you can be a member. Required, so but. that's important. You yeah. so a lot of people when we meet them at events, mm -hmm. we talk about becoming a member and I think a lot of people feel kind of scared because they're like, "Oh, I don't do this. I don't do what you're doing. I don't talk to the public. I'm not as knowledgeable as you or yes. I don't have a pet reptile." Or I don't have a pet reptile. Right. A lot of people say that, but you don't you don't have to volunteer at any of our events to be a member. You can just become a member because you want to come hang out at member events, which mm -hmm. we're going to be doing a lot of those in 2024. GRS members only. Not not working with the public, just hanging out with each other and doing cool things. Making um, friends. Yeah, exactly. All about building that community. We've got a great forum online and our Discord, our Facebook group. But if you do volunteer, any events that we go to, we've been to all kinds of conventions. There's more coming. We do the Renaissance Festival every year, which is wonderful. We love it. As well, the Village, which is like the haunted Renaissance Festival. In, would you call it that? Or is it just a haunted experience? It's, it's a haunted experience. It just takes place at the Renaissance Fairgrounds. That's right. It would be way cooler, hence <laughs> <it's> 13 <laughs> stories, <laughs> if it was a haunted Renaissance. Renaissance yeah. That would be fun. Exactly. Could you imagine all the like Renaissance era ghosts? It it would be <laughs> it would be phenomenal. Yeah. It would be mind blowing. It's still a lot of fun either way. Yes. It's amazing. This past year was ridiculously good. Every single person that came out of the haunted experience trail were all smiles, talking the entire time about how amazing it was. We've really come a long way. It's still a relatively new thing. I think it's only been open three four, three, three three years, years I think. It's getting yeah. better every year. So come see us next year uh, in October on the weekends at the Georgia Renaissance Fairgrounds. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's one thing we should say as well. Yeah. We get invited to a lot of scary themed events and we're happy to partake in them. We just put the emphasis on education. We're not scaring anybody no. with our reptiles ever or our inverts. That's not what we do, and not that's not what we're about. Yeah, not on purpose. People can walk up and be scared, and that's yes. fine. They're allowed to. But we're not going to jump scare. We're not going to throw no. it in your face. Mm -mm. We respect what you're willing to do, and if all you can do is look from afar, more power to you. That's yes. fine. You're allowed Absolutely. to look. Absolutely. So we get into a lot of cool events. Um, we were just at Conjuration, which is a small wizarding, um, wizarding fantasy yeah. convention they love us there they treat us like rock stars we we are so Humble. there's that yeah <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it's it's lots of fun there's lots of opportunity there we often see job postings in the reptile field or mm -hmm. in you know forestry field conservation or conservation well. mm -hmm. all of those fields we see them first and we post them to our members we do. you gr you get all kinds of networking when you're in the georgia reptile society it's really phenomenal so you know for 20 dollars a year to be a part of something that's making a positive impact in the community 
that's building a community that we're welcoming. We, we truly, I mean, we, if you want to be in our GRS family, we want you here. So it's, it's really wonderful. Um, it's a great opportunity. I can't talk about it enough. It's my job, but it's my passion too. Yeah. It's basically my whole personality. Yeah, so. mine too, actually. <laughs> snake, 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 everything. And we, we both just got a snake tattoo. Yes, we did. Yes, oh, that's, that's lovely. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, that the snake tattoo thing was just a girl's trip of other people we've met in Georgia Reptile Society that mm-hmm. we just formed such a strong bond. We were like, you know what? Let's go on vacation together. Why not? Why not? Right? And it was incredible. It and was. if you want friendships like this, join us. Join us. Come to the dark side. We have snakes. We have snakes. <laughs> so one thing that I did want to bring up uh, is how we help conservation of local species of ours in Georgia, such as like the gopher tortoise and indigo snakes and things of that nature that are needing a little bit more human intervention help mm-hmm. because humans have been destroying their homes. We do like to use a portion of our funds that we raise from merch sales and bracelets of holding sales and things like that to donate to conservation um, agencies or organizations around. So one was the Orient Society. Uh, We have the Rattlesnake Conservancy, Mm -hmm. uh, Save the Snakes. Amphibian Foundation. Amphibian Foundation. We have donated to all of these organizations this year. And we plan to continue our donations every year. So if you support us in any way, even if you are just a member, that $20 helps go towards uh, conservation efforts. It helps go towards our rescue program Mm -hmm. and everything like that, feeding us. Because uh, if you do volunteer with us at events, you get food, a food voucher. So, um, yeah. Yeah. And you know, we get, we get inquiries all the time. I'm, I don't live in Georgia, right? so I can't be a member or no, you can absolutely be a member. We just had somebody join from North Dakota, was it? Or South Dakota? Dakota. One yeah, of them. One, because, Dakota. Yes. A Dakota. They're both wonderful. Yes. But she saw our um, snippet in the Nat Geo yes. article about tegus mm-hmm. and we have a tegu task force that we initiated a couple of years ago. Um, kind of helps with the uh, wild, unnative, invasive, I guess, uh, black and white tegus that are found in southern Georgia. So, yeah, she found us from the Nat Geo article, joined up, and now she's in our Discord and spreading her incredible knowledge. Yeah, and I mean, if you if you see an event you want to come hang out at, you can come down for the weekend or, you know, Mm -hmm. you can travel, you know, we're happy to have you. You'll make such good friends. You'll be on their couch or, you know, who knows, but we have, we have members in so many other States, Florida, Um, Alabama, North Carolina, all the Carolinas, all the Carolinas. Yeah. (laughs) Dakotas and Carolinas. Dakotas and Carolinas. That's quite a roster. Yeah. And (laughs) and we're only getting bigger and better. Oh my gosh. This year has been amazing this year's been wonderful yes you know the pandemic really uh did a number i think on grs would you say yes i would say i mean there was the first year 2020 i believe the renaissance fair was canceled so that is our biggest event that's where we make the majority of our money in order to stay operating Mm -hmm. and we almost didn't make it and we've been around since 2012 Mm mm-hmm and for that many years of us doing good and um, spreading love for reptiles in the community, just to, you know, almost have to close our fictional doors mm-hmm. since we don't have a brick and mortar. Right. <laughs> it was scary, but, you know, we bounced back bigger than ever and we're doing way more events. We have a lot of really cool things in the works. I'm excited for 2024. Me too. Me too. It's going to be phenomenal. So even if you become a member and you can't do anything, you are doing something by becoming a member. Mm-hmm. That $20 is going to go to conservation programs. Mm-hmm. It's going to go toward our rescue program. It's right. important. $20 is important. Um, it really is. It goes a long way. Yeah. Let's see. So so speaking of that yeah. Tegu task force. Yes. Do you want to talk about U.S. Art and the Lucy Act and everything like that? Yeah. Um, so... U.S. ARC, the Phenomenal United States uh, Association of Reptile Keepers. Thank you. You're welcome. It was right there. <laughs> I read it. 
this is another organization as a reptile keeper that I feel very strongly about. I would say the majority of GRS feel strongly about being a member of, mm -hmm. I think it's $40 a year, but basically what US Art does is they fight for our rights mm -hmm. as reptile keepers across the US. And every day new legislation is being proposed. It's being um, covertly added into rule or yeah. laws that's like at what the very end happened. in small print. Or in the middle in small print. And they're like, oh, I don't read the terms and conditions. They sneak in like we're going to place a huge blanket ban on all of your pets that mm -hmm. you love and feel so strongly and have put so much money in. And they just sneak it into legislation. They sneak it in. And, and the word doesn't really get out to mm -hmm. reptile keepers. It's, it's kind of odd in a way. Because all of a sudden, overnight, you could be a criminal, yeah. I guess, if you want to call it that. But you could be breaking the law, whatever. This, this news doesn't go out except through U.S. ARC. Mm -hmm. um, they are really, really trying to keep everybody up to date. They have people that work just to catch these things in these laws that don't have anything to do with animals, but somehow will say, we're going to place a ban on Burmese pythons today. So it's a very important organization. We're all for it. They've helped us on numerous occasions. They continue to try to help us. Unfortunately, <laughs> nobody could do anything, no matter how hard we fought um, we last all, year. We sent letters. We to, sent letters. Yeah. Um, we showed up at mm -hmm. the Capitol mm -hmm. to fight on this unfortunate ban that is taking place in Georgia. Last year, I suppose it was a it was, hearing. Yeah, I know the news first started hitting around August 2022. And then I believe in October of 2022, that was the, the final, it's passed. There's nothing we can do. Let's mm -hmm. start preparations. Yeah, we, I mean, we fought. We did everything we could. And mm -hmm. U.S. ARC worked closely with GRS to try to prevent this from going through. Yes. They gave us a year. They said that if you own any of the species that they are banning, that you could get them microchipped and registered with mm -hmm. Georgia D DNR, and you had to do that by December 4th. Yes, and that's right around the corner. That's right around the corner. Including that it said that any breeders of these animals that are now on the banned list could have until December 4th to sell, but they could not breed any longer. And so, again, if if you get it microchipped, then you're fine. But if you haven't done that yet, then, you know, come December 4th, don't let them find out. Don't. <laughs> uh, truly. I mean, and, and this has been concerning for us for a long time as Georgia Reptile Keepers. We are next door to Florida, mm -hmm. and Florida is in a constant state of war when it comes to any animals you're allowed to keep, but especially reptiles. It's been it's been just awful yeah. uh, to watch what's going on there. I'm sure most reptile keepers know about the the massacre that took place earlier this year. Yeah, that um, was awful. Um, the Florida. Fish and, Fish and Wildlife, yes. They entered a facility and they slaughtered a man's reptiles. That After the man had been completely transparent so over transparent, and over, over again. Over and over, asked for help. They, oh, they, he asked for an extension. Yeah, yep. He, he, did he had a lot he of animals. Do. And then he got down, gosh, like 80%. Mm -hmm. And so he just needed a little bit more time mm -hmm. to find perfect homes for the remainder of the animals that were now considered illegal to own in Florida. So he was just complete, total communication with them. And they thanked him for his efforts by murdering even animals that he was allowed to keep, mm -hmm. even those that were pregnant with babies or grass. Because they misidentified. Yes. So their whole job to know what their whole job were. And they were like, whoops, yes. <laughs> my bad. My bad. Um, and left all the bloody carcasses for the man to clean up. His beloved pets. Yeah. It was devastating, not only as a reptile keeper, but as a reptile keeper next door in Georgia. Mm -hmm. They set the precedence for what's to come. Uh, um, a lot of states uh, look at what Florida's doing in regards to bans on reptiles, um, whitelisting, blacklisting. This subject is so huge. Honestly, one podcast wouldn't be enough to cover it. And I'm sure it'll come up many times because it's it's a big effect that keeps rippling. But knowing what was coming for our beloved animals, that's scary to me. So 
the animals that they have banned in Georgia that goes into effect December 4th is the Burmese python, the Indian rock python, the black um, and white, black and white Argentine tegu, mm -hmm. Chinese soft shell. Yes. And, and also then African helmeted, turtle, African helmeted turtle. and Nile monitors and Nile monitors. Mm -hmm. So it, it's no secret that the Burmese python has a very special place in Georgia Reptile Society history. One of our most beloved ambassadors, and I'm saying beloved, people know her by name. People would come from all over the state to see her. Just to see her. Was Paula Dean. She's retired now. She's doing great. There's nothing wrong with her. She's just retired. She's huge. I think I have a video of like five people hoisting her up to bring her into her little pen at the Renaissance Festival. Yes. And that was last year when she retired, I believe. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Last year was her last, her last Sweet hurrah. Baby. And and she is. She's a doll. Um. She's gentle and Burmese pythons, especially, they hold such a special place for all of us. They are just not a thought behind those eyes. No. They're super. They're super sweet. Obviously, any animal you get, you want to put work into. But in general, they're laid back sweethearts, and we have several in the GRS. I have a baby Burmese python named Gumby, and he's he's named Gumby because he's a green granite morph. He <laughs> is he's just a sweet little baby. If you see the face of a Burmese python, you you can't help but be drawn to them. They just look so sweet and innocent. Yeah, they They're look inviting. Yes, yeah, they, they have look puppy inviting. mouths. They do have puppy mouths. Yes. Yeah, so if you look at them, like right under their nose, has the little the cute puppy or kitty mouth ball pythons have this too they're just so cute but like burmese are gentle giants they are they're and gentle giants and they do get big and they do to me it's scary to see what happened in florida to that poor man and know that i'm on a register a registered list for um, dnr to just show up when they want for to. dnr to show up if they decide you know that you're not allowed to I'm not allowed to run the Burmese python anymore. Even though you... Gumby has been it. chipped, yes. for the record. And he's, <laughs> he's so small. He's so small. And that chip put him in such a mood. That oh. sweet child yes. was grumpy. My baby. Oh, he was so grumpy. <laughs> it, um, hurt. it hurt him. I, I actually, I held him probably a week after it happened. I was mm -hmm. holding him and he curled around my neck. And I do this with my reptiles because they're my little sweeties. I was just like rubbing his tail a little yeah. bit and it's and the chip is like right a, a couple inches above his tail and he started hissing and it was a sound of pain. You, once you've had a reptile for a while, you can kind of tell what they're upset about. Yeah. I don't know. What's, hey, get away from me. I don't feel like doing this or, yes. hey, that hurts. Yeah. Or, I could tell. He just, he, he breathed so deeply and and I thought, oh my goodness, I just touched his, his sore spot. He's still so little and... I held off for as long as I could to give him that time to grow. Yeah. But yeah, it's a sad, it's a sad state of things that we're facing. And I'll be the first to say, you know, Burmese pythons aren't for everybody. They are the second largest species of snake in the world. They can get 22, 25 foot long. Over, um, well over 300 pounds. Well over, yeah. It, I mean. They need a whole room. They need a whole house. room. They need a keeper who has help on hand to handle them to, mm -hmm. for health checks and stuff like yes. that. They need sizable prey items. Um, Which can get expensive it can and get difficult. Expensive, difficult. To find once they're yes. fully grown. Yeah, like. So it's, it's not for everybody. And I agree that there should be thought behind getting. <laughs> Honestly, I, I would have been happy if kind of the idea was for this instead of a full ban was to say hey we're limiting the number of animals you can breed per year and we're limiting who you can sell to there has to be proof that research has been done and that you can provide a proper enclosure i think that's what really needs to happen for our giant snakes anacondas retics and berms is that they shouldn't be so easy to get because when they're babies they are adorable. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It breaks my heart because I'm like, I fell in love with this little face. I can't handle a Burmese or a retic in my house. It's too big for me. And I'm also not very strong. And uh, honestly, I disagree. I don't... You're very strong. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> and honestly, I think it would be too much for my fiance and I 
as well because when they get that big you really truly do need four or five people to handle for you to change substrates and do a deep clean and health checks and things like that and hanging out you should have a lot of humans on hand because they're a lot of snakes i mean they're nice but it's a lot yeah i don't personally and this is not grs wide opinion right um but we are podcasting and we're just chatting here mm -hmm. together um personally i don't appreciate government overreach in that area like i don't want to be told if i can have a certain thing or limits even to an extent but i agree with that i mean because how many giant constrictors are getting bred and unsuspecting people are getting them or something like that there yeah. is a discussion about this and we can have this discussion but the problem with the ban is that no discussions were really heard. No. I mean, they, they were didn't give us a chance. They were heard, but they didn't even consider. They didn't consider anything. No. So it's it's devastating, and I just feel so much else could have happened instead of this. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we're uh, GRS. All GRS berms have been chipped and registered. It was, I'm sure and it tegus. was fun for our, yes, and all the tegus too. We don't um, really have Nile monitors or Indian rock pythons or anything yeah, else like no. that. But we do have tegus and berms and they've all been. That are our ambassadors. They're all now ambassador. up to date on um, sticking with the regulations and laws. And so. as far as I know, we'd have to get this um, squared away with Allie. But as far as I know, we're still allowed to rescue them. Okay. How does that work? Do we like I the person know. that's interested? to prove yeah how would that how work adopting that them out work? i i wonder if it would have to stay a grs educational animal Maybe. because so some of our members some of our board members especially have permits to keep certain reptiles mm -hmm. such as native species right native um, non-venomous species like corn snakes um, yes. yeah you have to get a permit for that and uh, dnr comes out and they do a check and they're like yeah you're good to go like yeah. you can't just willy-nilly get a permit you know, tomorrow and <laughs> right, right. There, it's a process, mm -hmm. and it should be. We're we're very proud of the fact that Georgia takes care of its native species; that they are protected in that way. We'd also love to see some protection for our venomous species. That would be lovely. But yes, uh, there are permits that can be gained, and mm -hmm. GRS. We do so much work with the public. Um, and these animals are essential. So that's that's the reason I went through with getting a Burmese python mm -hmm. before the ban is because education is is at my core. You know, it's who I am. And a Burmese python is if if you've ever had a child or you've been a child where a Burmese python is at your school, everybody's holding, a, you know, a section of its body. And it's just such a magical thing. Like kids still talk about that. And when they see us out and about, they ask if we have a Burmese python or yeah. do we have any big snakes? People will get, so we do bracelets of holding at our events, at most of our event, our outreach events. Yes. So you make a $10 donation that goes toward our rescue and adoptions and, and conservation, of course. And you get a bracelet of holding mm -hmm. and our volunteers see that um, you can hold anything that we have there that day. So the very first thing mm -hmm. that most people want to hold is a big snake. Yes. They'll see uh, one of our current Burmese ambassadors that are a little bit larger in size. We've got Lamia and we've got Delta, mm -hmm. and they're beautiful. They're both beautiful women, but a little bit heftier. They're probably like, what, 30 pounds now? Yeah. It gets tiring after holding them for a while, but <laughs> just imagine when they're fully grown. I know. But they see one of them, and they're like, <laughs> can I hold that? Yes. You can. <laughs> That's, that's okay. what they want to do first. So it's, it's a magical experience and it's, it's essential to do these things to inspire that love mm -hmm. and that sympathy and that respect for these creatures. A lot of times people think snakes are slimy. No. Or <laughs> no, they're scaly. They're not amphibians. Yeah. <laughs> right. So uh, it's, it's special work and we need those ambassadors. Once we instill that love, especially in the young ones, but in older people too, then we can make a worldwide difference, right? It's yeah. all a chain in making a difference where people say, oh, these animals in the wild, we need to protect them. We, we've seen how wonderful they are. Yes. So we need to make sure we protect them and protect the earth that they're living on. Mm -hmm. 
and they're so beneficial too. I mean, you've got free pest control, free rodent control. They just, and a lot of them are used uh, in medical research as well, breast cancer, heart mm-hmm. health, um, things like that. So they're just, they're so important. Yes. Um, and it's not up to us to play God on whether they live or die. So might as well just leave them alone and let them live, right? Yeah. <laughs> I think that's kind of the gist of what we wanted to talk about today. Yeah. That ban is coming up. So please, if you have one of the creatures we listed, and you can find this, we'll put the link in the description. Yeah, sure. Then it's essential that you get that done because we want to protect our babies. I know it's hard. I'm I'm still not quite okay with it, but it is what it is, and we have to move forward. And and GRS, we will, we will try to make a difference in this, and we... Mm-hmm. We've talked about doing the legwork to try to get it overturned. We need the community to yes. be together on this one to move forward and make changes and make differences. So, so yes, you can become a member of Georgia Reptile Society and U.S. ARC. That would make the biggest difference, even if you aren't able to make it out to any rallies or events. Yeah, just the membership really makes a difference. For sure. So... Yeah, we're so excited to get started with our podcasts. We've been talking about this for, what, like six months now? Yeah, a long time. But we have a couple different topics in mind, but we would love to know if you're interested in learning more about maybe certain species or certain events or anything. Just let us know. If it's reptile-related, we'll uh, tackle it. Yeah, and eventually we'll have the rest of the board on. Yes. Our board members, they're wonderful, um, hardworking people. And we're hoping to highlight some of the big reptile names in our community. Yes. I'd like to get some breeders on here. Yes. Uh, maybe Bob Vu. Bob Vu would Bob be wonderful. Hint, Tan Twink Twink, <laughs> if you're watching this. <laughs> um, or even, you know, maybe Matt Bowers. Matt like Bowers would be icons. wonderful. Yeah. It's a booming reptile community. We have so many great people. Yes. And we'd love to introduce you to them. So. Help support us, share, like, all of those things that people usually say at the end of these videos. Yes, do all the things. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with us today. Yeah. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>